Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and uh, I've lost track of the number of cheap Chinese multi-rotor frames I've bought which have turned out to be absolute crap. I mean really these things, you know, I just don't waste my time with them anymore. I've had, as I say, I've had plenty of them and invariably they're either too heavy, it's the fiberglass ones really are also the, the real crap ones, they're heavy and they're not well designed and they're just, you know, just not worth wasting your money even on the postage. So I was very pleased to hear from, where are we, here's the box, here's the box, from this crowd here who call themselves Flying Cinema. Just peel a sticker off actually so I can read that. The Flying Cinema, you might be able to see that in there. Perhaps, I don't know. Well, I've got the manual focus on so you probably can't read that. But Flying Cinema, they sent me their Cine, Cine Brick, Cine Tank, I can't remember. <laughs> oh God, Cine Tank Mark One. There it is, written on the box. Cine Tank Mark One. And what is the Cine Tank Mark One? Well, it's a multi-rotor, of course. And I'll show you it. Here it is. Look, isn't that wonderful? Actually, the reason I want to give you this little sort of sneak intro video is because, yeah, it really is. This is the way people should make kits. It's brilliant. Look, you get a screwdriver, Ooh, just in case you don't have one because it's metric. So if you live in America, it's all foreign to you, isn't it? It's metric stuff. Anyway, it's all done with metric fittings. The screws in that are all metric. And look, it's all nicely heat sealed into compartments. So you're not going to lose any of the bits the moment you open the box. And some of the bits are 3D printed by the look of it. Plastic is, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of bits to this kit, I've got to say. And the frames there, they look rather nice. Also, you can buy the individual parts. So when you smack it up, and let's face it, if you don't smack it up, you're not trying hard enough. When you smack it up, you can buy replacement bits. So you don't have to throw the whole damn thing away or buy a new frame. Excellent. And these are the little arms because it's a, um, well, I'll show you. I'll give you some links. If you want to see what it is, how, how they fly, put some links in the description of this video. You can go and have a look. Add some videos posted by the Cine, lost the box, forgotten, I'm old, oh it's useless, by the Flying Cinema people themselves. There's some videos they've put up here to show you um, how these damn things fly and I'm quite impressed. One of the things, I mean these people have really used their head. It's, they haven't just copied everybody else and thought, oh we'll make that too. No, they've, they've actually used some real thought in this because as everybody knows who's tried to do video from multi-rotors, one of the big problems is jello. And I'm not talking about raspberry flavoured gelatine and hot water. I'm talking about the way that because you've always got vibration from propellers, doesn't matter how well you balance them, you're always going to get a little bit of vibration. Um, because you've always got that, then with the modern cameras, with the, like, the GoPro and that with the rolling shutter, it causes a kind of a hula dance effect, you know, or if you live in Australia, hula dance effect in America and so forth. So, that means that you, the, the pictures are not steady and smooth. So what do you do? Well, there's a lot of stuff you can buy now to get rid of that, like these little, these little rubber here dampers, which are anti-jello things, you know. So all the multi-rotor, when the camera people are busy putting out all these little kits to reduce jello, but these people have built it into the design of the multi-rotor itself. It looks like what they've done is they've got the, the flying part with the arms and the motors and that mounted on one part of the frame and then the battery and the camera is mounted on another and there's a vibration isolation between them. The idea being that the battery mass acts as a huge, has a huge damping effect on any vibration. Clever, instead of just mounting the camera itself on, on a vibration mount, which means that you've only got the weight of the camera to act as a damping mass, by mounting the camera on the battery, which is then or on the battery frame, which is then isolated from the rest of the spinny roundy whirly twirly vibrating bits, then you're going to get a much better result. It makes sense. So top marks to these people for coming up with that really innovative idea. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this together. I mean, um, the, the instructions are downloaded. There's, nothing, there's no instructions in the box. You go online, download them. That's pretty common these days because, hey, instructions change. People improve them, hopefully, make them better. So I'm going to go online, download the instructions, put this thing together. And as I say, I've got an arm full of different flight controllers. I've got the NASA light here, which I got from um, Hobby King, I've got the APM 2.5, I've got, what else, oh, heaps are coming anyway, so this will make a lovely little test frame for those flight controllers, the, the frame will be consistent, so we'll be able to check out all those flight controllers, see how they go. So as you can see by the disastrously untidy state of my bench and coffee everywhere, um, I'm quite a way through the Cine Tank build now, and the few things I've noticed, first thing I noticed, um, it goes together pretty well actually. The Big bonus, I mean this little, this uh, using a media player here with the manual on discs, or on 
on a SD card it is here. But using this, the sort of constantly running video to step you through the construction process is absolutely brilliant. I really, really am impressed with the fact that, you know, you can just sit here and use the build video to help you put it together. Marvellous. I'm uh, chuffed to bits by that. That's made the build so much easier. And what have I found so far? Well, everything goes together reasonably well, with a few minor exceptions. Let's look at the things that didn't quite work out properly. First of all, when you extend the motor leads as you're supposed to do with the recommended motors, they recommend extending them by the length of the boom. Now, that's too much. I found that when it came time to slide the booms on, or the arms onto the uh, body, there was so much wire left that I had to poke inside. It was really quite difficult to get it all in there. And you could easily shorten them by 30 millimeters or more maybe um, to still get the same result without the extra weight of that wire and without the extra hassle of trying to push it back in. So that's one thing. The other thing, these motor mounts are quite clever. You see they're a two-part mount and they clamp onto the carbon boom. Now one thing I found was that they use 20 millimeter screws through here to hold the two halves together and I followed the instructions to the letter but unfortunately I couldn't get these two halves close enough together for the 20 millimeter screws to engage with the nuts. So I had to use the 30 millimeter screws that they provide for other purposes, these ones, to actually, one on each corner, to pull these halves together close enough that the 20 millimeter screws on the other two portions would catch. Then I tightened those up, took out the 30 mils, put the 20 mils in, tightened those up. So I don't know, maybe it's because it's cold here and the plastic wasn't as flexible. I don't know. But anyway, small problem, easily surmounted. Another thing I noticed, after I'd put this, uh, the bottom part of the clean section on through these rubber isolating mounts then the instructions said you can mount your board here and it showed you how to do it but I thought oh my god what am I going to do because I don't have access to the bottom plate anymore it's already mounted to the dirty section so what I ended up doing I actually had a close look and it's really well designed because there's holes in here where you can put your screwdriver through to reach those little screws that'll be used to hold this on it's great thinking in fact all the way through all these little holes you see in the bottom of the frame they're designed to let you get your tools through to tighten up screws further through. And in some cases it goes right through the dirty section and into the clean section. Wonderful. Very good thinking. Brilliant. So, yep, I'll carry on with the build now. And when I get a bit further on, I'll let you know what I think. So here amidst the devastation that is my workbench is the virtually finished Cine Tank build. And I'll just give you a bit of a walkthrough here so you can see what I've done. Um, up this end we've got the uh, Free Sky receiver. This is one of the telemetry receivers that also does CPPM and I've actually got the voltage sensor here, a little board going into the receiver so it'll give me real-time telemetry as to my battery voltage. Really important with multi-rotors I think to have that kind of telemetry so that you know when your battery is getting low or if something goes wrong like there's a cell dying you know it may give you a chance to bring that machine home before it falls out of the sky and hurts itself or something underneath. Then we've got of course the Naze 32 Acro board, haven't got the barrow or the compass on this one this is just the Acro board and then some stuff here you might not see that often, so take a closer look at that. Right, as with the instructions, I bought the battery voltage up through a JST connector from the CineCoin, that little PC board that's underneath in the dirty section. That comes up here, and that goes into this little uh, regulator here. This is one of those Hobby King regulators. Remember I did a, a hack video a little while ago on how to hack those regulators or those becks to give you different voltages. I've hacked this one to give me 12 volts because I need to run my FPV transmitter on 12 volts and my camera on 12 volts. So I just modded this. You'll see an extra resistor in here. That resistor there is the resistor I've added to change the output voltage. It now gives exactly 12 volts. That 12 volts of course then goes through this power filter here and I also showed you how to make your own power filter. So there's the toroidal core with copper windings and a capacitor over there. It gives us nice smooth power coming out of there. So the voltage uh, comes into this, out of there, into the power filter, then out of the power filter into the video transmitter. And also it runs down here, there's the lead runs right down there to the front where I have my camera. It all runs on 12 volts. Nice and simple. So I can run this off a four cell pack and all this other gear. It's quite happy, it doesn't get burnt up and fried being on uh, 14 or 16 volts as it would be otherwise. Now I've deviated from the standard layout quite a bit here because I've got a range of different four cell packs and some of them like this 4000 just would not fit in the back there where my VT, my video transmitter and that is. Now the normal layout for these things is the battery slides in the back where I've got all those electronics and all the electronics sits on top. But hey, I've decided because of the various batteries that I'm using the various sizes and so forth to try out and see how this thing works and what endurance I can get. I'm just going to whack the battery on the top like I do with my mini quad. So it means that all those electronics in there are nicely protected and I've got the flexibility to put whatever battery I want on the top without having to worry about will it fit. And that's the way I'm going to do it. Up front of course we've got 
a little FPV camera and I put it in a core flute box so it's reasonably well protected and that's just velcroed to the front here because unlike the mini quads there's no camera mount standard with the cine tank you lift to your own devices I believe you can buy one now but you know this one no camera mount so I just did it the easy way core flute and that's just the 600 TV line Sony camera with the wide dynamic range. Now my Mobius will fit on this little platform under here. It's designed for a GoPro, but I don't have a GoPro. No, I'm one of the probably the only person in the world who flies FPV and doesn't have a GoPro. But the Mobius does a pretty damn good job. So that'll be sitting on this little platform here to give me the high definition video. And on the Wheel of Fortune scales that are my Chinese scales, the whole thing without a battery ready to fly is weighing in at 1,118 grams. I'll turn that into Imperial for those of you who are still old school. Here we go, old school measurements. It is 39.3 ounces. So you can work that out for yourself what that is in pounds, but it's two pounds and seven ounces or roughly, I think, from a bit of mental maths. So that's the bare ready to fly weight without, without a battery with the FPV camera. Of course, I don't have the Mobius on there yet either. So I'll throw the Mobius on, see what difference that makes. Here we go. 40.7 or 40.8 ounces and in the old or the new money that is of course 1.155 kilos that's what you're going to be looking at when you uh, build your cine tank so here it is there's my cine tank and i've got a 4000 milliampere four cell zippy compact on the top there i'll be using that to test that certainly brings the weight up a bit it certainly feels like a bit of a tank but i've got to say it has a lot of power with these sunny sky motors on there and um, even with these crappy plastic plastic props uh, we'll see how that works out. Now, just to give you a comparison size-wise, they're quite a bit bigger than the little mini quad, as you can see. There's a significant difference between the 250 size and the 400, I think it's about a 400 size, of the Cine tank. So now I've got my Mobius on here, got my FPV camera on there. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much all ready to go. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is I've used a uh, commercial FPV transmitter here. It's one of these, I don't forget how many milliwatts it's rated at, but it has a little fan, and the little fan's vibrating, so I wonder if that's going to affect my video footage, just the vibes from the fan. I guess we'll find out when I fly it. Uh, flying it tomorrow, so uh, stay tuned. There will be a flight video and you'll be able to see exactly how this little baby performs in the air. And I'm interested to compare it to the mini quad in terms of maneuverability, speed and performance, and also flight times. I wonder what we'll get out of this baby. I don't expect too much with plastic props. And remember, this is built to the Cine Tank website recommendations, which is with the relatively high KV motors, 1250 KV, and relatively small props. These are 8s, I've got some 9s as well. You can't go any bigger than 9s with these arms, but they do make a version now with longer arms. You can put, I think, up to 12-inch props on, I'm not sure, which would really significantly increase the endurance, but maybe you compromise a bit of the old uh, performance and maneuverability. I don't know. I'm going to test what I was sent and uh, made it to the book. We'll just see how it flies. Now, if you've got any questions, stick them on the bottom of the video. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and if you've got anything you'd like to see in the flight video, just put that up there too. And if I read those comments before I do the flight video, I'll do my best to you know, check it out for you. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More videos coming up soon on RC Model Reviews.